fighting skill of which they are already well aware. 174. This was a widely broadcast speech picked up by Japanese news agencies. 175. The 50,000 watt standard wave station on Saipan, the OWI radio station, broadcast a similar message to Japan every 15 minutes about Hiroshima, stating that more Japanese cities would face a similar fate in the absence of immediate acceptance of the terms of the Potsdam Declaration and emphatically urged civilians to evacuate major cities. Radio Japan which continued to extol victory for Japan by never surrendering, 87, had informed the Japanese of the destruction of Hiroshima by a single bomb. 176, Soviet Foreign Minister Vyacheslav Molotov had informed Tokyo of the Soviet Union's unilateral abrogation of the Soviet Japanese Neutrality Pact on 5 April. 177, at 2 minutes past midnight on 9 August, Tokyo time, Soviet infantry, armor, and air forces had launched the Matryon Strategic Offensive Operation. 178, four hours later. Word reached Tokyo of the Soviet Union's official declaration of war. The senior leadership of the Japanese army began preparations to impose martial law on the nation with the support of Minister of War Karikaika Anami to stop anyone attempting to make peace. 179, on the 7th of August, a day after Hiroshima was destroyed, Dr. Yoshio Nishina and other atomic physicists arrived at the city, and carefully examined the damage. They then went back to Tokyo and told the cabinet that Hiroshima was indeed destroyed by a nuclear weapon. Admiral Soemu Toyoda, the chief of the naval general staff, estimated that no more than one or two additional bombs could be readied, so they decided to endure the remaining attacks, acknowledging there would be more destruction but the war would go. 180, American magic code breakers intercepted the cabinet's messages. 181. Purnell, Parsons, Tibets, Spates, and LeMay met on Guam that same day to discuss what should be done next. 182. Since there was no indication of Japan surrendering, 181. They decided to proceed with dropping Gano the bomb. Parsons said that Project Alberta would have it ready by the 11th of August, but Tibet's pointed Taoye the reports indicating poor flying conditions on that day due to a storm, and asked if the bomb could be ready by the 9th of August. Parsons agreed to try to do so. 183, 182, Nagasaki. Nagasaki during World War II. Formal picture of ten men in uniform. The five standing are wearing ties, and all but one of the ten wears a peaked cap or garrison cap. The boxcar and its crew had dropped a fat man atomic bomb on Nagasaki. The city of Nagasaki had been one of the largest seaports in southern Japan and was of great wartime importance because of its wide-ranging industrial activity, including the production of ordnance, ships, military equipment, and other war materials. The largest companies in the city were Mitsubishi Shipyards Electrical Shipyards, Arms Plant, and Steel and Arms Works which employed about 90% of the city's labor force, and accounted for 90% of the city's industry. 184. Although an important industrial city, Nagasaki had been spared from firebombing because its geography made it difficult to locate at night with an forward slash APQ-13 radar. 119. Unlike the other target cities, Nagasaki had not been placed off limits to bombers by the Joint Chiefs of Staff's 3 July Directive, 119, 185 and was bombed on a small scale five times. During one of these raids on the 1st of August, a number of conventional high explosive bombs were dropped on the city. A few hit the shipyards and dock areas in the southwest portion of the city, and several hit the Mitsubishi Steel and Arms Works. 184. By early August, 
the city was defended by the 134th Anti-Aircraft Regiment of the 4th Anti-Aircraft Division with four batteries of 7 cm, 2.8 in, anti-aircraft guns and two searchlight batteries. 114, a photo of the harbor at Nagasaki in August 1945 before the city was hit with the atomic bomb. The harbor at Nagasaki in August 1945 before the city was hit with the atomic bomb in contrast to Hiroshima, almost all of the buildings were of old-fashioned Japanese construction, consisting of timber or timber-framed buildings with timber walls, with or without plaster, and tile roofs. Many of the smaller industries and business establishments were also situated in buildings of timber or other materials not designed to withstand explosions. Nagasaki had been permitted to grow for many years without conforming to any definite city zoning plan. Residences were erected adjacent to factory buildings and to each other almost as closely as possible throughout the entire industrial valley. On the day of the bombing, an estimated 263,000 people were in Nagasaki, including 240,000 Japanese residents, 10,000 Korean residents, 2,500 conscripted Korean workers, 9,000 Japanese soldiers, 600 conscripted Chinese workers, and 400 Allied prisoners of war in a camp to the north of Nagasaki. 186, Bombing of Nagasaki The Boxcar B-29 and a post-war MK-3 nuclear weapon painted to assemble the Fat Man Bomb at the National Museum of the United States Air Force, Dayton, Ohio responsibility for the timing of the second bombing was delegated to Tibets. Scheduled for the 11th of August against Kokura, the raid was moved earlier by two days to avoid a five-day period of bad weather forecast to begin on 10 August. 187. Three bomb pre-assemblies had been transported to Tinian, labeled F-31, F-32, and F-33 on their exteriors. On the 8th of August, a dress rehearsal was conducted off Tinian by Sweeney using Boxcar as the drop airplane. Assembly F-33 was expended testing the components and F-31 was designated for the 9th of August mission. 188, Special Mission 16, Secondary Target Nagasaki, the 9th of August 1945, 189, Aircraft Pilot Corps Scene Mission Rolling Olegay Captain George W. Mark Hart Dimples 82 Weather Reconnaissance, Kokura. Nagging Dragon Captain Charles F. McKnight Dimples 95 Weather Reconnaissance, Nagasaki, Boxcar Major Charles W. Sweeney Dimples 77 Weapon Delivery The Great Artiste Captain Frederick C. Bock Dimples 89 Blast Measurement Instrumentation Big Stink Major James the First. Hopkins. Junior Dimples 90 Strike Observation and Photograph Full House Major Ralph R. Taylor Dimples 83 Strike Spare did not complete mission. At 3.47 Tiny and Time, GMT plus 10, 2.47 Japanese Time, 190, on the morning of the 9th of August, 1945. Boxcar flown by Sweeney's crew, lifted off from Tiny and Island with the Fat Man with Kokura as the primary target and Nagasaki the secondary target. The mission plan for the second attack was nearly identical to that of Hiroshima mission, with two B-29S flying an hour ahead as weather scouts and two additional B-29S in Sweeney's flight for instrumentation and photographic support of the mission. Sweeney took off with High's weapon already armed but with the electrical safety plugs still engaged. Dot. 191. During pre-flight inspection of Boxcar, the flight engineer notified Sweeney that an inoperative fuel transfer pump made it impossible to use 2,400 liters, 640 U.S. gal, of fuel carried in a reserve tank. This fuel would still have to be carried all the way to Japan and back, consuming still more fuel. 
Replacing the pump would take hours. Moving the fat man to another aircraft might take just as long and was dangerous as well, as the bomb was live. Tibets and Sweeney therefore elected to have Boxcar continue their mission. 192, 193. This time Penny and Cheshire were allowed to accompany the mission, flying as observers on the third plane. Big Stink, flown by the group's operations officer, Major James I Hopkins. Junior observers aboard few of the planes reported both targets clear. When Sweeney's aircraft arrived at the assembly point for his flight off the coast of Japan, Big Stink failed to make the rendezvous. 191. According to Cheshire, Hopkins was at varying heights including 2,700 meters, 9,000 feet, higher than he should have been and was not flying tight circles over Yakushima as previously agreed with Sweeney and Captain Frederick C. Bock who was piloting the support B-29 the great artiste. Instead, Hopkins was flying 64 km, 40 m, dog leg patterns. 194, though ordered not to circle longer than 15 minutes, Sweeney continued to wait. The before image looks like a city. In the after image, everything has been obliterated and it is recognizable as the same area only by the rivers running through it, which form an island in the center of the photographs. Nagasaki before and after the bombing, after the fires had burned out for Big Stink for 40 minutes. Before leaving the rendezvous point, Sweeney consulted Ashworth, who was in charge of the bomb. As commander of the aircraft, Sweeney made the decision to proceed to the primary, the city of Kokura. 195. After exceeding the original departure time limit by nearly a half hour, Boxka, accompanied by the great artiste, proceeded to Kokura, 30 minutes away. The delay at the rendezvous had resulted in clouds and drifting smoke over Kokura from fires started by a major fire bombing raid by 224 B-29S on nearby Yahate of the previous day. 196. Additionally, the Yahate steel works intentionally burned coal tar to produce black smoke. 197. The yes, let's take a break. It's a 90 minute <coughs> the cape quarter is out of power soon. <coughs> so that's six part video. <coughs> I will uh, charge my cam corner. It's completely dark. So I will uh, charge my cam corner. And we keep reading. <coughs> 